This is going to be a review of the TI-36X Pro. So this is a scientific calculator with quite a few extra features built in. It's thin, it's light, and it has a pretty simple design. It comes with this case, it fits over the front, and covers all the buttons and screen. And then it also fits over the back. Both the case and the calculator itself have these feet on the back, which make it sit flat on the table and it doesn't slide around when you push buttons. All the buttons feel pretty nice, so this is definitely one of the better calculators out there in terms of functionality, and in my opinion, it's the best scientific calculator that Texas Instruments makes. Right now on Amazon, you can find this for about $23, and that's pretty typical, although I think Walmart is selling it right now for around $19. You can see here on the button panel that this calculator has quite a few different operations and features. Obviously you have all of your sine and cosine functions, logs, pi keys, exponentials, and then you can see there's quite a few menus up here that deal with things like matrices, vectors, and data analysis. So even though there's a ton of features packed into this calculator, um, I think they did a pretty good job of making each function easily accessible. So instead of having a bunch of menus, you can get to a lot of the functions by just pressing a key multiple times. So here are the three trig function buttons right here, sine, cosine, and tangent. And if you want sine, you just click it once. And then, for example, if you wanted inverse sine, you just click it twice. And then if you wanted something like the hyperbolic sine or the inverse of the hyperbolic sine, you would just click it three or four times and you can see it'll scroll through all of those options. So that's true for other buttons like this one right here, cycles through pi, e, and i, and then natural log, log, and a log of any base. So I much prefer this method of entering expressions. I think it's much more efficient than having to go into a menu and then scrolling down to something and then hitting enter. You can just click the same button and then you get the operation that you want. And this calculator, like most scientific calculators these days, has templates built in for a bunch of different functions. So for example, fractions, square roots, any type of root, exponentials, and any number raised to any power. And then there are also templates for derivatives at a point and definite integrals. And then in most situations, you will get the reduced exact form of your answer. So here I have five plus one over the square root of 54, and you can see it reduces the fraction and reduces the square root to give the simplest answer in exact form. So this works in quite a few cases, including common trig values. So you can see here sine of pi over three gives me the exact value of square root of three over two and four pi plus six pi gives me 10 pi, but if you start to mix in extra numbers, in some cases, like here, this will not give me nine pi plus six, which is the exact form. It will give me a single decimal approximation. And then also any integral, no matter how simple, will give you a decimal answer. And I almost forgot to mention that if you have any answer that you get in exact form and you want the decimal answer form, you can always just press this button right here and it will switch the exact answer to a decimal answer. And then all of your calculation history will end up piling up above here and you can just press the up arrow to scroll through it all. And then if you see any value you want to re-enter, you can either pick the answer or the original expression that you entered and then just press the enter key while it's selected and it'll bring it down so that you can perform more operations on it. And then just to kind of give you an idea of relative calculation speed, I have another similarly priced Casio calculator here and I have this integral expression entered on both of them and I'm going to press enter right now. And as usual, the Casio calculator is quite a bit faster, but for the most part, this calculator is fast enough for most of the things you'll be doing on it. Okay, now I'm going to go over some of the features that make this calculator stand out from your typical budget scientific calculator. I'm going to try to go over these in an order from most frequently used to least frequently used, at least in my experience. So first off is the basic numeric solver function. You can get to that by pressing second sign. And then from here, you can enter pretty much any one variable equation that you want. So here's a pretty simple example. And then all you do is press enter and solve for x. 
and then after a couple seconds it will give you your decimal approximation of x right there. Next is the polynomial solving function. For this you can either do degree 2 or degree 3 polynomials. So you just choose the degree you want and then press enter and then enter in your a, b, and c values. So for me if I wanted to solve this equation on the screen here I would enter a as 2, b as 5, and c as negative 6 and then press enter and it would give me my first possible value of x and then my second possible value of x. There's also a menu for solving linear systems of equations so this can either handle two equations with two unknowns or three equations with three unknowns. If we select the first option here we get this nice template and you can enter your equations in this form. For example here I have 3x plus 2y equals 11 and 5x plus 6y equals 21 and then I'll press enter to solve and it gives me my x value of 3 and y value of 1. Um, something worth mentioning I think is that for the 2x2 two two linear system of equations you get that nice template that you just saw but then if you go to 3x3 three three, it's too much for them to fit on the screen or something and they give you the more classic matrix form so for someone who's not familiar with this it could be a little less intuitive but it does the same thing so next up is the constants and unit conversions you can go to this menu here and you get a list of quite a few very common physics and chemistry constants and you can scroll through and then pick one and just press enter and it will enter it here in the calculation screen and you can do whatever you want with that number but if we just go ahead and evaluate C you can see that's equal to the speed of light and then next is the unit conversions app so if I go into speed slash length here you can see here's a bunch of different options and if I wanted to convert for example 5 kilometers per hour to meters per second I would enter 5 and then go into the conversion menu go down to option 3 and here you can see kilometers per hour to meters per second and then press enter there and it will enter it in your calculation menu then just press enter again and then it will give you your 5 kilometers per hour is equivalent to 1.38 repeating meters per second um, so while I'm here I'll just kinda mention I said I thought they did a pretty good job of minimizing the amount of menus that they had for the amount of calculation features there were but keep in mind that for some of these more advanced features you're gonna have to be digging around in more menus and it's a little bit more cumbersome and not as quick as some of the basic operations next is the matrix operations so if you press second math here you get into the matrix menu this is what it looks like you have a list you can store up to three matrices of any size and then you have identity matrices of size 2 and 3 so in order to edit a matrix you go over to this menu and then hit enter here you can choose the size of your matrix um, you can do up to a 3x3 three three, which is good enough for a lot of engineering applications I'm just gonna do a 2x2 two two as an example once you select the size you get this template here and then you can just go ahead and fill in the values and then once you've done that you can go back into the matrix menu and then press enter that will bring the matrix into the calculation screen and from here you can perform operations on it so you can either grab any of these built-in operations so if I wanted the transpose of that matrix I would just select 2 for transpose here and then press enter and it will give me the transpose of my matrix A or if I want the determinant of that matrix I go back into the matrix menu select determinant go back to the matrix menu again select matrix A and then press enter and it'll give me the determinant of matrix A and of course also you can perform matrix multiplication here I have my first matrix A and matrix B which looks like this if I want to multiply those two together I just bring them both into the calculation screen matrix A times matrix B and then press enter and it'll give me the result for multiplying those two together and similar to the matrix menu there is a menu for vectors it operates pretty much the same 
and here are the three built-in operations. So next is the data and statistics function. If you press the data key, you can enter a list of values. I have entered some values as an example. And then once you've done that, you can press second data and you get this menu here with a bunch of different features, which I'm not gonna cover all of, but you can see the menu and kind of get an idea. But going into single variable statistics here and then selecting my list one that I entered, I can get a ton of commonly used statistics variables, some standard deviation, minimum, maximum, first quartile, median, third quartile, maximum X. Um, this next feature is called expression eval and you get it by pressing second table. Here you can enter an expression with variables. So for example, X squared plus six Y. And then if you press enter, you will be prompted to enter values for X. So I'll just do 7.2598 and 1.657. And then if you press enter, um, it will evaluate that expression from those values of X and Y. And this is useful mostly if you have a big long equation and you don't want to type in each X value or Y value a bunch of times into the calculator. You can just enter it as X and Y and then tell the calculator what X and Y are equal to and it'll evaluate that for you. And then finally, there is a table function. So if you press the table key, you can enter a function. I have this already entered here. And then you can choose the value that you want to start at. So I'll just keep that at zero. And then the step size is how large of a change you'll have between cells in the table. And then after you press enter a couple times, you'll get this table like you might see on a graphing calculator and you can scroll through different values of x and see their corresponding values for f of x. There's also this math menu, which has quite a few not very commonly used calculator functions that you can see here. This menu right here is pretty much all for calculating between different angle measures. So that's pretty much it for a summary of the features. Next, I'm just gonna kind of mention that this is, for some reason, the calculator that sits on my desk and that I use almost daily. Um, I have quite a few calculators obviously and I don't really have a good reason for using this one all the time other than I've just had it for a long time so I know where all the buttons are and I feel like I can do a lot of quick calculations with it better than with any other calculator. But after using this calculator so much there's a few things that sort of annoy me about it and they're kind of small things but worth mentioning. Um, first off is the speed. So like I said before, it's fast enough for almost any single operation that you're going to do. But once you start to pile on a bunch of different templates, for example, here I have this very large expression. And then once you get to this point, entering more things in your expression is less responsive. So sometimes I'll find that I go to say like add another number here. And you couldn't really see, but I just pressed plus 678, and I did it pretty fast, but it missed one of the key presses. So that's a result, I think, of the calculator being slowed down with all this stuff in the calculation screen. Also, for some things like the numeric solver, once you enter enough terms in your expression, okay, here, I've just filled this out quite a bit more, um, you start to get this checkered cursor symbol. And that pretty much means that you have a few more characters until you are unable to enter any more. So here I've reached the limit. And I have a pretty long expression here, but you can see that it's not so long that it's not something that you would run into on a regular basis. This happens to me all the time where I go to enter an expression that I have written out on paper only to find that it won't actually fit in the numeric solver and then I have to go out and evaluate part of the expression in the calculation menu, combine like terms, and then go back to the numeric solver. So anyways, a few small things to keep in mind um, from my personal experience. Hopefully you found this video useful and uh, thanks for watching.